Hi guys, so this vlog is about how I'm getting to continue my hobby of making jewelry out of circuit boards. So basically this is one example of something that I made. The green card is a circuit board that I just cut into a triangle to look like a Christmas tree. I put little, little ornaments out of beads on it and then a battery pack on the back, a resistor and a switch on the front, a little button on the front. And when I hit the button, a little Christmas tree light comes on. <laughs> now, this has always been a hobby of mine. I've always seen circuitry as something very functional and very technically savvy, but I've also seen the circuit boards that are made and all the electronics components arranged on it as something very beautiful. You know, you open it up and I just, I whenever I open up some kind of electronics equipment, I just, I think it's so beautiful that I think that it should be made into art and not just something that electrical engineers get to enjoy. So I've made everything from tie clips to earrings to bracelets and necklaces out of um, circuit boards. So basically this story is comprised of two different storylines which have now come together and collided to allow me to be able to share this kind of hobby or this craft with quite a few people and it's taken on a whole different meaning which is pretty cool that I want to share with you in this story. So it all started when I met these two separate people in different, totally different environments. The first one was VG. I met her while attending a rehabilitation conference here at CMC. Um, I was learning about some research that was being done in an area that I was interested in. And during the coffee breaks, I went out and was milling around and people were selling a lot of like CMC apparel and such for people that were visiting. But she was also selling these little, little handicraft things, some earrings and necklaces, bracelets, different types of jewelry and I was really interested because she said that this jewelry or these handicrafts are made by these gypsy women that come to her home twice a week. Basically the women who live in this community don't have a stable means of income and what she does is she invites any of them who want to come to her home and she teaches them little, little handicraft skills. So and instinctively I asked if I could come along and just see how things are done and she's like, yeah, yeah, please. Actually what we did was the next week after church I just came home with them and we had lunch together and she showed me everything that they make and I was so stoked. And she asked if there was anything that I would want to teach them. So immediately ideas started turning in my head and I said, trust me when I say by the time that I arrive on Monday I will have some ideas. So basically what I decided to do was to take this thing that I had started back in the U.S., which is making jewelry out of circuit boards or recycled electronic equipment. And I was really, really excited because I thought that this would be cool because we could get either the campus involved or the bioengineering department involved to supply us with old or unused circuit boards. And I also began finding old boards in my lab that um, I was able to use. I cut the circuit boards apart with a hand tool called a Dremel. It's just like a rotating blade that I can cut in the circuit boards into different shapes. And then I can make it into necklaces or bracelets or um, earrings or tie clips. Those are the kinds of things that I've experimented with. So I found a Dremel here on campus from a friend and the prop only problem was that the motor on it was really, really weak. I give the analogy that trying to cut the circuit boards with this Dremel was like trying to shovel my driveway with a spatula when there were six inches of snow. And despite these drawbacks of the Dremel, the gypsy women were so excited to try it out. As soon as I cut like the first heart pendant out of a circuit board, they just immediately jumped in, they all wanted to try it, and they really picked up quickly. And their attention to detail is so astounding. They are able to um, notice little imperfections and they just want everything to be perfectly right. So the stuff that they make is not second rate and it's really, really coming out of um, dedication and passion and a desire to earn a living for themselves because they want to make quality work. So they were picking this up really quickly and getting really on board, but really the holdback was this Dremel. And I looked online and if we wanted to purchase a Dremel, it was going to be about 4,000 rupees, which is $60, but that just wasn't something that VG was going to be able to afford. Well, this handicraft probably would be here while I had the Dremel. Once I left, it was probably going to be something that would disappear. 
Meanwhile, while I was meeting VG and working with the Gypsy Girls, I met this pastor named Theo. And basically, Theo runs 10 children's homes in the Chittur area, which is about an hour away from here. And I met him one day while I was working at a camp, basically a medical rural clinic, a roadside clinic that we just set up for a day. People come, we give them immediate, any immediate medication or diagnose any high blood pressure or glucose um, imbalance in their bloodstream and basically give them a referral to a doctor at the main hospital that they can go see a date and a time that they can show up and be seen by a doctor. So I go to these camps and although I don't have any technical medical skills that I can use, I just use my camera and I take pictures for the doctors so they can advertise a little bit better to their, the hospital what they're doing and perhaps inspire others to dedicate a day or two a week to social work in these camps. I also take video. Um, I'm also a lot of times just put on people control. A lot of times we're just running into these temples and we have just kind of corners or rooms to work with and they oftentimes put me in charge of designing the flow of where the people should go. So where we should have the registration table, where we should have the pharmacy, where the occupational therapist, where the speech pathologist or speech therapist should be sitting, so on and so forth. So I really show up and I just do anything I can to help these camps run. Week after week I was getting to meet Theo, this pastor who was really passionate about helping this area. And he and I have developed a pretty good relationship. He's driven me all the way back home when I missed the last bus back to Bagayam. He's invited me to come for the inauguration of different orphanages or different social events in his community. Basically, I was doing that all off of my volunteer time. I would go sometimes on Thursdays to do the social work, and sometimes I'd go on the weekends to meet kids in his orphanages or things like that. It's just been like a really great relationship. And he actually was an electrical engineer, so we sometimes talked about my project too. But anyways, long story short, I get a text message from him about three weeks after I was really, really getting disheartened about the Dremel. And he's like, hey, so my church has really been praying and we'd really like to give you a scholarship to acknowledge all of the work that you have been doing here. So it's only 2,000 rupees, which isn't a lot, but we want to give it to you as more of a thank you rather than a financial support. And so my first instinct was like, absolutely not. I'm here at Fulbright. Like Fulbright more than enough pays for the expenses that I have here. So um, I just won't feel right taking the scholarship. So immediately, just very respectfully, I was like, thank you so much. I really appreciate your church's intention and the thoughtfulness you have. Um, but to be honest, like my scholarship covers everything that I need. So I would much rather have you guys use it towards something, some need that you have in your church. Because if you don't know how much 2,000 rupees is, it's about $30. So even though it seems not like a lot, um, by Indian standards, it can do a lot. Because I was talking with him, and for 5,000 rupees a year, I think they can buy enough rice to feed all the kids in their children's home and all their parish members after church every weekend. So I'm like, 2,000 rupees is a lot in terms of what can be done here. So I just tried to politely uh, refuse. And he was like, no, 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 it's not about the money. It's about wanting to honor you and to show you that we really appreciate the work that you're doing with our church and our community. So please, if you would be willing, please accept this small, small gift. So he was asking if I would take this $30 scholarship every month. And so he said, you know, if you don't want to use it for yourself, we'd much rather have you use it towards some need that you see in the social work that you do. So if there's something that you think really could benefit from these 2,000 rupees, like we want to give you the means to really have an impact on the social work that you do. And that's when it hit me that after saving only two months of this amount of money, I would be able to buy a Dremel to teach these women how to make the jewelry. So that was just like a really, really amazing moment where I was like, I haven't even really prayed about it that much that I need, that I would really like to get a Dremel to teach these women, you know, not to feed them, but to like teach them to fish, you know, teach them to make this jewelry that I think is very unique and has already gotten like a following among the people who buy their crafts. They know that we're starting to make these things and they're getting pretty excited about it. So um, that was just like a really amazing testament to like an answer to prayer, but also just um, a sense of feeling that people recognize that the work that I'm doing here is something that they would like to support. So that has meant a lot. But um, I'd like to now show you some of the jewelry that we have made with the women. A couple
couple of shots that I took working with the women, as well as um, one piece of circuit board art that we have made recently and are beginning to sell. And we'll see how well it goes over the Christmas season. But and otherwise, um, make sure that you like this video. You can subscribe right here if you want to check out more, follow along more with my story being here in India. With that, I will leave you with the tutorial of how I do some of my electronics rig. I hope you enjoy. Alright, bye.